For decades, scientists wondered when humans first reached the Americas. This question cut to the core of human origins on this continent, and remained one of the most debated mysteries in archaeology. Textbooks taught a clean, simple story that seemed settled for nearly a century. This model, known as Clovis I, claimed that humans crossed the land bridge from Siberia into Alaska around 13,000 years ago. They supposedly followed an ice-free corridor between massive glaciers and spread south quickly. The evidence for this was the Clovis culture, defined by distinctive stone spear points found across North America. No one knew the true answer because the evidence was scattered and often contradictory. The mystery remained open, leaving a gap in our understanding of how and when people survived the brutal Ice Age landscape to settle a new world. Now, new evidence has settled this question. We now have the complete picture, and the decades-long mystery is finally solved. To understand how we reached this closure, we must look at how the old model failed. For 80 years, any discovery older than 13,000 years was dismissed as a mistake or a measurement error. Scientists relied on a rigid timeline that ignored genetic hints and uncomfortable archaeological dates. However, the pattern began to shift as new sites emerged that did not fit the Clovis mold. In 1997, a site in Monteverde, Chile, was confirmed to be 14,500 years old. This was 1,500 years before the ice-free corridor even opened. It proved that humans were already at the southern tip of South America while the north was still blocked by ice. This discovery created a massive gap in the timeline that needed to be filled. If people were in Chile by 14,500 years ago, they must have arrived in North America much earlier. The investigation moved to the Pacific Northwest. At a site called Cooper's Ferry in Idaho, archaeologists found stone tools and charcoal from ancient hearths. They used radiocarbon dating, which measures the decay of carbon-14 isotopes, to determine the age of organic material. The results showed the site was 16,000 years old. This was another piece of the puzzle. It suggested that the first Americans did not walk through the center of the continent between glaciers. Instead, they likely followed the coastline in boats, moving south along the Kelp Highway. This route provided plenty of food from the ocean and was clear of ice while the interior was still frozen. These findings pushed the date back, but they were only the beginning of the reveal. The case for an even earlier arrival grew stronger with the discovery of butchered animal bones. In Texas, at the Galt site, researchers found stone blades beneath layers associated with the Clovis culture. This is called stratigraphy, a method where scientists study layers of earth to determine the sequence of events. Older material is always at the bottom, while newer material is at the top. The tools at Galt were found in a layer dated to 16,700 years ago. Not far away, at the Friedkin site, similar tools appeared in even older soil. These discoveries showed a clear pattern of long-term occupation. People were not just passing through. They were living, hunting, and making tools across the continent thousands of years before the traditional timeline began. But the real mystery was whether humans arrived even earlier, during the peak of the Ice Age. Genetics provided a vital clue. Genetic analysis which maps ancestry by comparing DNA sequences, showed that the ancestors of Native Americans became isolated from Siberian populations around 23,000 to 25,000 years ago. This is known as the Beringian Standstill. During this time, a population of perhaps 10,000 people, roughly the size of a small town, lived on the land bridge between Asia and America. They were trapped there by massive ice sheets. This genetic evidence suggested that humans were poised to enter the Americas at the height of the last glacial maximum. This was around 23,000 years ago, a time when woolly mammoths roamed and sea levels were 400 feet lower than they are today. Despite the genetic data, the archaeological community demanded a smoking gun. They needed physical proof of human presence from that specific window of time. For years, the search yielded only possibilities and maybes. Some researchers found mammoth bones in Canada that appeared to have butcher marks dating to 24,000 years ago. Others found what looked like stone tools in a cave in Mexico. 
However, skeptics argued that natural processes, like rocks falling or animals gnawing, could mimic human activity. The field entered a period of tension where the data from DNA did not match the data from the dirt. The timeline was fragmented, and the closure the scientific community craved remained elusive. The breakthrough finally came from an unexpected source in the desert of New Mexico. In White Sands National Park, a vast gypsum desert stretches across what was once the bed of Lake Otero. During the last ice age, between 26,000 and 19,000 years ago, this basin held shallow freshwater lakes surrounded by wetlands. In 2009, researchers from the National Park Service noticed unusual impressions eroding out of the ground after heavy storms. They were human footprints preserved in ancient mud. Unlike stone tools, which can be moved by floods or bones, which can be carried by scavengers, footprints are primary evidence. They represent a single moment in time where a human stood in a specific spot. You cannot argue with a footprint. Excavations at White Sands revealed something even more significant. The footprints were not just on the surface. They were stacked vertically through multiple layers of sediment. It was like a book where every page showed human activity. To determine the age of these prints, scientists turned to radiocarbon dating of seeds found within the footprint layers. These were seeds of Rupia serosa, an aquatic plant commonly called ditch grass. Because the seeds were embedded directly in the tracks, dating them would provide the exact age of the people who made the prints. When the first results came back, they were stunning. The seeds dated to between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago. This discovery was the moment the timeline finally made sense. It proved humans were in the heart of North America at the height of the Ice Age, 10,000 years earlier than the Clovis theory allowed. However, the scientific process requires rigorous verification. Critics raised a valid concern known as the hard water effect. Aquatic plants can absorb old carbon from water, making them appear thousands of years older than they actually are. If the seeds were contaminated, the dates would be wrong. To settle the debate, scientists returned to the site to find independent lines of evidence. First, they extracted thousands of grains of conifer pollen from the same sediment layers as the footprints. Pollen comes from land plants, so it does not suffer from the hard water effect. Second, they used optically stimulated luminescence, or OSL. This method measures when sunlight last hit a grain of quartz sand. If the pollen, sand, and seeds all gave the same date, the evidence would be ironclad. The results were definitive. The pollen dated to the same 23,000-year window as the seeds. The OSL dating confirmed the sand was buried between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago. Three independent labs verified the results. The dates were not an error. They were a fact. Humans were living in New Mexico, while massive glaciers still covered Canada. The old theory that the ice-free corridor was the only route south was officially debunked. This discovery connects separate findings into one coherent system. The timeline now fits. 25,000 years ago, isolation in Beringia. 23,000 years ago, humans in New Mexico. 16,000 years ago, established in Idaho and Oregon. 14,500 years ago, humans reached South America. The mystery that puzzled scientists for nearly a century is answered. 